Hello and welcome into the latest edition here of the Danny Sancombe Show. My name is Matt Kuyper. I'm the Sports Information Director here at Cal U. And with me is Head Coach of the Vulcans, Danny Sancombe, here after Thanksgiving. It's been quite a while. Uh, last we talked in the studio here, it was uh, before the season's even started, and we're already five games in. So uh, it's been qu quite a run here for the Vulcans. But first, uh, how was Thanksgiving for you and the family? i uh, be able to get some time away from the hardwood for a little bit. It was very nice. Uh, we stayed home and uh, didn't do much, which was nice. I uh, was able to watch uh, my computer a little bit and watch some upcoming games. But other than that, really enjoyed it with the kids and uh, wife and had a, had a great uh, couple days off. Yeah, again, uh, we're coming back from Thanksgiving here. We've had a handful of non-conference games. We're starting crossover here uh, this weekend. We'll talk about that in a bit. But just to recap, basically, the whole season to this point, uh, it started the season off with a tip-off tournament down in Charleston uh, facing the host Golden Eagles in the uh, first game of the season uh, and had a really nice balanced effort uh, there. Had five guys in double-digit scoring uh, with Brent Pegram and Preston Boswell scoring about uh, 45 between the two of them. Two seniors have been uh, familiar with the MEC, familiar with Charleston, uh, just the idea of what does that mean uh, for the program getting, getting that nice kind of win to start the year? Well, I think it was big, you know, going into the game, knowing they're the 25th ranked team in the country. I think our guys were looking forward to the challenge and we had talked, you know, so much and it's been so long, but we really talked about we want to get off to a great start this year uh, and uh, getting a chance to play the 25th ranked team in the country. Uh, we were really excited for that opportunity and I think like you mentioned you know our balance uh, that game was great you know having five guys in double figures uh, was uh, very very good we played very well offensively that game I thought we played very well defensively in the first half in the second half uh, we had tr trouble guarding them but they're a really good team so they're going to give teams uh, some fits on the defensive end this year. Yeah, that's one of those things there being top 25. It was the first win for the Vulcans uh, against a nationally ranked team since uh, 2014 in January. So, again, for you building this program, making it where you want it to go, uh, that's one of those kind of statement wins you need to have to be able to beat those good quality teams that not only good in the region but also good nationally. Yeah, I think, you know, with our scheduling this year, we were very uh – optimistic uh, you know we wanted to play good teams this year to get ready for our conference play we know how uh, great our conference is and uh, our schedule uh, out of conference has been a grind thus far yeah you come off the bat after Charleston you face a Glenville State team with one of the best players in the region even in the country and John Williams uh, and that was gonna be a tough task there but the Vulcans got the victory there so you gotta be really happy when you left Charleston with 2-0 and again uh, Keith Palick the freshman uh, having a double-double that game, so it was nice to see him uh, getting in there and having contributing there early. Uh, you just talk about the Glenville game uh, overall, and one of those things, too, as a coach, you have to be real happy shooting 32 or 37 from the free throw line. Yeah, that was big for us, that game. You know, uh, that was really the difference in the game. Uh, they, they had trouble keeping us in front. They pressed a lot, uh, and we attacked a lot, but we were able to convert from the foul line. And Keith, uh, not only did he have a great game, but down the stretch, he made two big foul shots to put the game uh uh, on ice for us and it was a good it was another team effort a lot of guys did a lot of good things for us uh, we moved the ball uh, we shot you know we shot good shots and we were able to score the ball um, defensively I still you know at that point wanted us to be better um, but they're hard to guard they have uh, two outstanding players I thought we did a pretty good job on one but the other uh, he got off and uh, uh, you know he, he nearly beat us so it was good uh, to get out of there 2-0 uh, and and beat two quality teams I think Charleston is 5-1 and one now, and I think Glenville is 3-2, and two, and their only other loss was to Charleston. So um, they're playing good basketball as well. Yeah, it's one of those things there you come out 2-0, and oh, but unfortunately for the Vulcans, uh, Zion Collins goes down with an injury, so that obviously handcuffed the team for the next couple games. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second here. But come home, Franklin Pierce, a team that nobody really had seen a whole lot of. I mean, they're not in the region. They're up in New Hampshire, uh, but a good quality team. They advanced to their semifinals of their conference tournament. Uh, two years ago when they played sort of like the PSAC not having a season last year. Uh, what was it going into that game you, ha you saw on film uh, before we talk about the game overall with Franklin Pearson being the idea of beginning to come home finally for the first time in so long? Well, it felt great to be able to play at home, uh, which was great. Uh, they presented some problems. Their guard plays very good, um, you know, and I was a little worried about that. I thought that was our best defensive game, especially in the second half. Uh, we were lights out defensively and I uh, thought we did a good job uh, rebounding the ball in the second half and again you know we had balance another great game we scored over 100 points um, we were moving the basketball Brent uh, has done a great job thus far just getting us uh, where we need to be and, and our backcourt with uh, Brent and Preston are so experienced and they do such a good job then obviously we didn't have Zion that game but you add uh, you know Zion in the mix uh, our three perimeter players are very experienced and very good at what they do. That was the first time for a lot of the Vulcans uh, fans to be able to see Phil, Philip Olsen 
uh, seeing the maturation he made from freshman year to sophomore year, a game he went off and a lot of people were like, who's this kind of guy having 37 and 10? But that's something you've uh, been talking all offseason about the impact you thought Phil would be able to do. And just his athleticism in that game really showed off. Yeah, Phil is uh, a special player. Uh, his uh, work ethic uh, over the last uh, few years has grown so much. And uh, I just continue to see him getting better. His mindset, uh, you know, his toughness, everything that you want to see guys continue to get better in. He's really working in those areas. And then just his basketball skill level has improved tremendously. His ball handling, his shooting, his passing. He can do a lot of different things outside of scoring and rebounding. So he's a special player for us, and we need him to play big uh, each and every night for us. And in that game, too, I mean, uh, Bryson Lucas uh, came on to the scene as well, but having 15 points and six rebounds as a freshman, uh, true freshman, a lot of couple of dunks there, uh, getting the fans excited between Hill and Phillip. Uh, it had to be pretty excited to see a freshman like that be able to step up and playing quality minutes against a team when Zion being out. Yeah, and Bryson is another player in our program, a young player that uh, the sky is the limit. He has a chance to be a, a special player as well. His length really presents a lot of different problems. He can guard multiple positions uh, offensively. He shoots the ball well. He can put it on the floor. Uh, you saw he can, you know, he can dunk the basketball. He gets up and down the court. But uh, he's just going to continue to get better, uh, too. He's got the right attitude, fun guy to coach. Uh, between him and Keith Pallack this year, those guys have been very, very good for us. And we're going to need them to continue to play at a high level for us to be uh, at the top of our conference this year. Yeah, you referenced in the, uh, before uh, we started talking about some of the players about the second half there. They only shot three of 17 from beyond the arc. So as a coach, you had been really excited after seeing that. Uh, they went nine of 21 in the first half. So they really wanted to shoot the three. Uh, but being in the second half, being able to limit them on the perimeter, uh, forcing them to get either inside or uh, not to get the shots they wanted. You had to be pretty happy with that kind of uh, performance. Very much. And that's what I was expecting. You know, I didn't think they were a great shooting team. So we gave them some looks in the first half and, and they made some, but we stayed with our defense. Our guys stayed sound. In the second half, I think the, the law of average has worked itself out for us. And so you go from playing that game, and then a couple of days later, you go uh, a team you're very familiar with uh, from your time in the MEC and also right down the road in Fairmont State. Uh, one of those teams that's been out there, uh, national ranked year in, year out uh, since they made a deep run in the NCAA championship. Uh, what was it about Fairmont State? Obviously, a year in and year out, you know they're going to be there. Uh, what, what kind of challenges did they present uh, pre, uh, before the game? Well, they're just a, you know, they're a good team. I think they're ninth in the country. They score the ball very well. Uh, you know, their guard play, uh, very seasoned. They're very experienced at those positions as well. And, uh, you know, their, their money guys played uh, well for them. Uh, and then, you know, a couple guys come off the bench that played extremely well. I thought we had a chance to win the game. I think, uh, you know, we grew from that game and we'll, we'll, that game will help us as we get into uh, conference uh, play. But I really thought we outplayed them for, you know, 39 minutes of the game and we just uh, didn't finish the game uh, like we uh, needed to. And I think uh, it was a good learning experience and our guys were able to forget about it and move on to the next game. But uh, we were a little disappointed we didn't get that one. We thought we should have had that one. Yeah, again, with Fairmont there, uh, Philip Olsen had another 35-point game, uh, 16 rebounds, and a huge double-double for him. The guy went back-to-back 30-point -back games, first time over 25 years. I can't even find the record of it. I got to go back to the Jim Boone era uh, when they were packing Hamer Hall night in, night out. So, again, just seeing a player like that being able to step up, even against a high-quality opponent, that's what you got to be happy to see uh, for a younger player. Again, the amount of minutes he played as a freshman, he's still a young player uh, at this point in his career. Yeah, Phil uh, was uh, extremely aggressive uh, against Fairmont and did everything. Uh, you know, he scored the ball in close. He put the ball, you know, down on the floor. He made some good passes to his teammates. He was big for us uh, that game. Uh, and, you know, we expect that from Phil. Uh, he, he's very, very talented, um, you know, night in and night out. If guys and teams aren't going to double him, he's going to present a uh, tough matchup for any individual one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, he was uh, big for us in the uh, Fairmont game, scoring, rebounding, defending. He had a really good game for us. Yeah, and again, he was a big part of it, but the Vulcans scoring over 50 of their points. Uh, they scored 92 in the game, 50 were inside the paint, so that's the thing there. If they're going to give it to you down low, uh, as we're seeing the highlights here, a lot of layups and dunks, if they're going to give it to you, you're obviously going to take those kind of passes there and be able to take those shots from in close. Um, and as you said, the idea of leading for so much of that game, had a four-point lead with a minute 44 left. It's just one of those things there, a young team uh, working through some growing pains and also just down the stretch, Fairmont guys just really playing clutch uh, late in the game. You can tell they've been a seasoned veteran program. Uh, and been in those situations types before. Yeah, and the bad thing for us that game, I guess what we were all so disappointed was we just didn't defend the last five minutes of the game, and that was the difference. They were 
able to just really outscore us uh, at that point. And uh, we want to win games uh, like everybody else, but we want to be a good defensive team that's going to present a lot of challenges for our opponents. And uh, in the last five and a half minutes, we didn't do a good job with that. Yeah, you said talk about presenting challenges. I mean, the first four games, the Vulcans all scoring over 90 points in the game uh, per game. So it's one of the highest scoring teams in the PSAC. So obviously getting the ball uh, into the basket, a lot of different guys being able to do it. Obviously, Alston and Pegram, but a handful of guys being able to step up. Uh, DJ Slaughter without uh, Zion Collins being able to step into the starting role there and give you valuable minutes and getting significant experience as a true freshman to be pretty uh, clutch for you guys. Yeah, and I think uh, DJ has a, a chance to be a, a very good player in our program. He shoots the ball extremely well. He's very calm, collective, makes good decisions with the basketball. Uh, and, uh, you know, getting a chance when, when Zion doesn't play, uh, in two games really gives us a chance to grow and expand our bench and I uh, was very pleased with how uh, DJ has uh, responded since uh, Zion has went down and even in the Charleston game DJ played very well for us. He's been very solid for us this year and it's not too surprising because he had a great preseason for us this year and it's just carried on uh, into the games now. And after that here, on we go back on the road again for a late game right before Thanksgiving against another quality opponent. And it seems ad nauseum right now with talking about the quality of teams we've played. Uh, but Shippensburg, a team that was picked to win the PSAC East, uh, made the PSAC Finals two years ago, last time it was a conference championship. Uh, but they were missing their top player, the PSAC Player of the Year, and Jake Bliss. So that obviously uh, changed some things possibly what they're looking to do. But you talk about the Raiders uh, and how that game went. Yeah, they're a really good team with him and without him. Uh, you know, they, they're they're – Perimeter players really present a matchup problem for a lot of teams. They're six five and a half and six six, and they have the ability to post up, ability to post the ball or put the ball on the floor and score the ball. So uh, we were worried going in to that game how we would defend that. I think we were able to win the game due to our defense, which was extremely uh, exciting for our coaching staff. Um, you know, to hold them to 67 points uh, and win on their court, which is a very difficult place to win. Their record at home over the last five years has been very impressive. Uh, it was a dogfight. It wasn't the best game we played all year. We turned the ball over way too many times. I think we had 19 turnovers. Uh, we didn't do a good job rebounding the ball, but we found a way to win, and that mainly was due to our defense on the defensive end and uh, holding them uh, and defending the three-point line as well. I was very happy with that. And it's funny you brought that up because one of the notes I wrote down was 3 of 17 shooting uh, for the Raiders from beyond the arc on their home floor, which you always assume you're going to shoot better at home. Uh, but going 3 of 17 from beyond the arc uh, really handy, handicapped uh, what they wanted to do. And uh, the, talking about rebounds, uh, Philip Halston had another double-double in that game, was named the PSAC West Defensive Athlete of the Week uh, for that performance with 10 rebounds and four blocks too. Uh, so not only be putting the uh, scoring points, but being affecting the game on the defensive end with blocks and at the uh, – at the glass with the rebounds. And even without the block shots, Phil did an incredible job defending their post player, who's who's the top post player in the league. He had a tough game, uh, and I think Phil uh, altered uh, other shots and just made it difficult for him to get any good looks. So uh, he was big for us, uh, obviously, with the 10 rebounds and the four blocks, but he did a lot of other things defensively that helped as well. And then all offensively, you know, he hit three threes, I think, and uh, had 23 points, which was really, really big. And I thought Brent, uh, was able to control uh, the tempo and, and get in the lane and make plays for himself and the teammates. And then, again, Preston was just uh, steady and solid for us uh, as well. So it, it was a good win for us to go into break, and I think we needed a, a break playing that many games in such a short period of time. It was really nice for our guys to get a little bit of rest over Thanksgiving. And one of those things, too, they had one point lead with eight seconds left, so it's still a one possession game. But they foul Boswell, he makes two free throws, seals the game, and that's what you want out of a senior leader who's been through uh, so many big games uh, between uh, in the MEC, Wheeling, and West Liberty, and now coming to the Vulcans for his final season. So it's great to see Preston be able to seal the, seal the victory there and get a nice road win to go into the break and take that nice time off. Yeah, and we were really happy, you know, with Brent fouling out, I think with the last minute and 15, minute and 20, whatever it was, how we were able to handle their pressure uh, without our point guard and everybody chipping in and handling the basketball and DJ coming in as well, making a big foul shot. But felt good when Preston got to the foul line. He's a clutch player, and uh, he was able to knock the two uh, foul shots down and, and give us that cushion we needed.
Yeah, and again, one of those things we talked about, Zion. Zion Collins came back in that game, played 23 minutes off the bench. So, again, nice to see him coming back uh, right before break, and I'm sure he'll be uh, much more uh, ready to go here, full allotment of minutes uh, come here after break. But, again, speaking of break, we're going to take a quick break here before we talk about the, this weekend uh, when the Vulcans head out east against uh, Bloomsburg. They begin PSAC crossover play. Vulcan basketball is back at Bloomsburg, at East Stroudsburg. Women at Bowie State. Men home versus Carlo. Home versus Westchester. Home versus Millersville. Home versus Kutztown. Home versus IUP. At UPJ. At Shepherd. Home versus Slippery Rock. At Edinburgh. At Clarion. At Mercyhurst. Home versus Gannon. Home versus Seton Hill. At Slippery Rock. Home versus Pitt Johnstown. Women at Salem. At IUP. Home versus Edinburgh. At Seton Hill. Home versus Clarion. Home versus Mercyhurst. At Gannon. Follow the Vulcans live on CUTV Sports 1, on the PSAC Digital Network, and at CalVulcans.com. Welcome back to the Dan Sancombe Show. My name is Matt Kyer from the Sports Information Director here at Cal U. And with me again is head coach Dan Sancombe. As evident there by the commercial break there, a lot of PSAC contests coming up here for uh, the Vulcans beginning this weekend, uh, starting crossover play. Uh, being again, you've got the number of teams in the PSAC East. Uh, what are your thoughts overall by playing a handful of East teams each year? It gives you different views of uh, different offenses, defenses, but also gives you a little bit maybe a prep of anybody you might see in the PSAC tournament and then the NCAA tournament yeah. at that point. Yeah, absolutely. There's a possibility of that. Uh, you know, this is we're such a big conference, you know, and some, some years, you know, you don't play certain teams on the East. I think we get six games over there. But, yeah, I love it. I think, uh, you know, I, I think the – Style of play is very similar on the West and the East, but it's good to see uh, some, you know, different opponents when you, you know, play a, a Shippensburg or you play a Westchester or Millersville, you know, outstanding teams on, on that side. Um, it gets you, you know, ready, obviously, when you get into the uh, PSAC West, which uh, will be a grind this year, and you're going to play good basketball to win. So playing these talented teams, uh, you know, 22 league conference games is a lot. Uh, so uh, it's not like uh, – you know, sometimes in uh, Division One, uh, you look up and a team wins 20 games in their first 10 games they play, they're not going to lose. They're paying people to play. Uh, you know, we're in dog fights each and every night uh, with our schedule. So uh, looking forward to going to uh, Bloomsburg and uh, East Stroudsburg this weekend, and we're going to need to play good basketball if we want to win. Yeah, again, uh, with Bloomsburg here, I know I took you away from film here to watch uh, come over here on the set. Uh, what have you seen so far on Bloomsburg uh, doing this season and also what they bring back from a couple years ago? Yeah, they're a very physical team. Uh, they rebound the ball extremely well. They score a lot on second chance opportunities, so rebounding is going to be important. Uh, their guard play is, is solid. Uh, you know, their, their leading scorer is scoring 21 a game. Uh, he has the ability to shoot the three, put it on the floor. He's got good quickness. So uh, we're going to have to be able to do, you know, the little things, rebound the basketball, keep them in front, and force them to take contested shots if we want to come out there uh, with a win. And then again, with the PSAC crossover play, you go back to back. So you play Bloomsburg Friday, and then you make a trip over. You're on the eastern side already, but you're going to keep going further. You used to go to East Stroudsburg. Uh, one of those programs uh, in this, over the last several years has been one of the best ones in the PSAC East and overall with a number of NCAA tournaments. So what have you seen so far on East Stroudsburg that they're doing again uh, this, uh, this season? Yeah, they, they, they play a little bit more like a, a Mountain East team. They, they like to go up and down. Uh, you know, they'll trap and press. Uh, you know, but they always have quality bigs. They get the ball inside. They're, they're a balanced team that uh, runs good sets. Uh, they will exploit mismatches, um, and they work extremely hard on the defensive end as well. So another well-coached, both teams well-coached. We're going to be need. We're going to have to be ready to, to play good basketball to, to go over there and get two wins. And if I remember correctly, I think uh, two years ago when we played last, the first crossovers, I think all the visiting teams lost. Um, so uh, we want to make sure we're ready to play and uh, um, can snap that, uh, snap that streak, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, this Friday and Saturday. 
And again, before we get to the, the weekend there, uh, let's just talk about what you guys did for the, for the break with the team overall. Because, uh, again, you play uh, late in uh, Shippensburg. You have the holiday coming up, and then you're not playing until the late weekend with finals coming the week after. Can you just talk a little about what the schedule's been like for the players, uh, for the fans at home, so you know what they've been going through these uh, some time at home and then back to study? Yeah, we sent them home. Uh, some of them went home with parents uh, that were, were closer uh, to Shippensburg, and then the next morning everybody else left, uh, and they came back Saturday, um, reported back Saturday uh, for uh, uh, shooting and uh, a little bit of uh, running. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it was nice. They needed some time off, and I, I think uh, I, we're not a old team or a young team. I think we've got really good balance. Uh, I think it was really nice for our younger guys to be able to go and spend uh, some time with their family over Thanksgiving. I think it was also nice for our older guys as well, but they've been through it. Some years, you know, you don't get to go home for Thanksgiving depending on where you're playing or how the schedule uh, is set up. So I think that was nice, and I think everybody came back rejuvenated. Um, you know, you're tired when you play so many games in a short period of time, and that's everybody involved, you know, especially the players. I think more of them physically – um, than, than anything, it was nice for them to have a break. And I noticed, um, you know, uh, especially Sunday when we really got back into it, just the energy and practice. It was a little sloppy, um, you know, which is expected, but the energy was really good and uh, the effort was where I think it needs to be for us to be uh, at an elite level this year. So I really like that. And uh, we've got great team chemistry. You know, I can't say enough about – our leadership this year uh, on our team. Obviously, Brent, uh, you know, he's been with me uh, for, for a very long period of time in Preston. But Zion now, you know, he's been with me for four years. I've really seen these guys grow. Even though Jermaine Hall is not playing for us, he's such an important person in our program, the way he talks uh, to our players and uh, treats our players. And then obviously to start to see the emergence of Phil Alston, not only as a great player, but becoming a leader in our program and the Tyler Berries continuing to grow as leaders. Uh, it's been fun, you know, and we have to continue to grow in those areas if we want to be a championship type of program, which we all want. Um, you know, it's just not about going out and playing. Uh, being a championship program, I really believe, is, you know, the culture, how guys conduct themselves in the classroom, obviously in the court, in the weight room, in the dorms, around town, here, uh, you know, I just I love the guys in our program, uh, and for having you know a team of eighteen to twenty-three year olds, uh, we got a great group of young men in our program. Again, certainly off to a hot start. Uh, it's one of the best ones for the Vulcans here in a number of years. Um, and see if they can keep it going this weekend. And again, PSAC crossover play. Uh, follow all the games. Feel free to visit calvulcans.com. The games will be on the PSAC network, so you can watch them at home uh, or wherever you may be on whatever mobile device or computer, TV, whatever you want to watch it on. Plenty of ways to follow the PSAC network. Uh, Bloomsburg on Friday and East Stroudsburg on Saturday. So, again, Coach, thanks for taking a couple minutes here with us. I'll let you get back to game film. I know you got uh, plenty to watch and uh, safe travels and best of luck this weekend. Go Vulcans. Everybody come out and support us when we get back home, please. Well, it's Danny Sancombe. I'm Matt Kuyper. Thanks for watching the Danny Sancombe Show.